the Riot Podcast today, Wednesday, International Women's Day. Isaiah, what are you doing to celebrate? You know, I have a lot of big plans for International Women's Day. Honestly, uh-huh. one of my favorite days. Yeah. I think it's a little bit underrated as a holiday. I'm shocked we don't have the day off. That's the the biggest thing I've taken away so far today. But a lot of big plans for me. Obviously, some surprises for Nikki. So it'll be great. Dad. It would be good if we could take some time and reflect on some of our favorite thing the, about women. The, <laughs> yep, and the role they play in our lives. You know what? I think the same. But we can't because we have to work. We have so, so much work to do. I feel like uh, if you keep going, someone's going to get offended. It's going to be Nikki. <laughs> <laughs> it's never me. It's, a, it's another lady who's listening mm, who thinks yes. and doesn't realize that they're teasing. Mm-hmm. True. Of course. And we, we sincerely do love international women. Oh, we love women. I can't tell you how many times I get a text message or an email about something where they feel like I've been slighted in a way. <laughs> and it's like, no. And, and they just don't understand that you guys are just joking. And how many times do you get emails when I've been slighted? Never. 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 <laughs> hmm, because I feel slighted all the time. No one's ever. And those are on purpose. <laughs> and they're intentional. <laughs> you guys are always super concerned, but yes, happy uh, Women's Day today. Yes. Speaking of women, mm-hmm. we talked about some dating stuff. Mm. Some Gen Z. Women do date. They do. Yeah. They do date. They be At least dating. I've heard. They be <laughs> At least I've heard. I don't I have too much experience, but I've heard that they do date from time to time. So this is a new feature on Tinder that you can learn about where if you're wondering about certain terms in case you've been insert term or you are a person who mm. is doing this term uh, you'll have a little bit more knowledge and understanding uh, for what's going on in the date yeah or I feel like maybe if you're watching like a Netflix show and they say something you don't get oh and you feel bad you maybe look it. on the Tinder app first it might explain it to you yeah. or, or if you're like an older fellow or lady and you're uh. looking for a younger partner that uh. would also be one <laughs> Oh, sure. It really feels like that was the top reason. That, that they is did definitely this. the top reason. Everybody's given up on their own age group. Yeah, so. that's right. <laughs> I just feel like they're not mature enough for me, yes. so I need to need to look older. So you're going older mm. or yeah. younger? But still keep using my young person vernacular. Mm-hmm. Of course, uh, they'll we, be impressed. We also talked about a little. Would you rather Wednesday? We did only eating meals you cooked. Or only eating fast food all the time. I've got to say, you guys are fantastic with sending in Would You Rather Wednesday Mm -hmm. questions. So once you have a chance to answer it for us by texting at 877-2-RADIO, you throw us also your own question you think we should ask next week. And I won't go into uh, like rehashing the Would You Rather, but I'll tell you that there's one key factor that that completely changes one way or the other which one you would choose, at Mm -hmm. least for us anyways. We also talked oh, about... Wait, hang on. Okay, one other question, too. We said no curbside, right? Yeah, yes. definitely no. Okay, but would you count... Okay, so like Shake Shack over there, yeah. you, they have a drive through uh-huh. but you can't order at the beginning of the drive through It's only a pickup of orders that oh, you Shake do Shack on counts. the app, but that's no different than curbside. But it's a different mm. place. It's like five guys. Five guys would count. In I my think, book, Subway would count. But they'll bring counts. it out to you. They will, but I Five Guys doesn't count. They don't have a place where you can drive up and knock it out of your car. I, but it's fast food, They do. They, they have what? the spot, and then you can choose. No, but that's They'll dip- bring it out Does to your Chipotle car. Count? No, it, well, they have a drive-thru? To be a drive-thru, the drive-thru, they need to hand it to you through the window. But was the question a drive-thru or fast food? It was drive... He said... Fast food, and then in parentheses, I can actually bring it Pull up for you if you like. <laughs> if you want the way he phrased it. Because we have so many it. drive-thru places, but you're not allowed to make the order at the start of the drive-thru, mm-hmm. like like a Wendy's or I, a McDonald's. I think it counts as long as it's not like a restaurant. Mm-hmm. Like, if it's like Five Guys, that's fast food. If it's Shake Shack, that's fast food. Chipotle's fast food. If you're talking about Old Charlie's, Old TR, Texas Roadhouse, those aren't, that doesn't count. But okay. even at Texas Roadhouse, I just. You could do curbside. I just do curbside and they bring it out to but me. But it doesn't count. Never but do they have a time. window? It don't count. Uh, I, I think can the see window. the window. My car is the window. There is no. a, they do have a window. They do <laughs> they, have a window I know, sometimes. I, when I thought about but that. But it's I not fast Texas. food. That's why I think the, the difference is there. See, it's if Texas Roadhouse food. is included, the choice is obvious. Oh, yeah. You're but TR, we're yeah. taking TR. The, uh, the we're not counting TR. Letter of the question from John was. You could only eat meals you cooked or only ate fast food in uh, parentheses, restaurants with a drive through Okay, so then a lot more places kind of count because a lot of our uh, stuff has drive throughs but we're just not ordering it through there. Yeah. Which it's may- just the big window where they throw it at you. Which just makes the case more for your restaurant. I know, but it doesn't matter. We can't afford it. But so. then it gets more expensive also. <laughs> so maybe it doesn't. That's all right. All right. Next one. <laughs> uh, we also, I went on a little rant. Jim's being bad. Mm. Yeah. I was yelling for a little bit. I think Jim misses you. 
I think yeah, that might be it too. Because I know you're busy recently. I've been really and busy. He's yeah. missing you. You know, sometimes how and like your only time together children. is in bed. Yes, nighttime. So That's right. He is sad, and so he just pees there. Yep, he just pees in the bed. You That's know, the big thing. Some kids like they don't get enough attention to their parents are too busy working, mm-hmm. or like they just uh, maybe aren't paying enough attention to their child. So then the child will like act out. And do crazy stuff just because that's the only way to to get their parents to look at them. Yeah, oh, true. That's what Jim's doing that's to you. That's what he's doing. You're a negligent father. <laughs> I'm not negligent. Your life is so wrapped up in your uh, career that you are leaving the son that you have to fend for himself, and he's just crying out for a hug. See, I can't even be negligent because he's <laughs> so annoying. You're not even there to be negligent. No, I'm. Whenever, but when I am there. It's 24-7. He might as well be licking my nose. Aww. I mean, he is straight up in my face at all times. This well, is, yeah, he misses you. Yeah, of course, which is okay. That's you're fine. You're like the dad That's okay. in, like, in movies where the son's like, hey, dad, can I have a catch? And he's like, sorry, I have numbers to type That's up or whatever. That's not true. Uh, and I've got a meeting and I've got a flight to catch. And the son's just sitting there sad. That's, That's what you're true. doing to Jim. I'm just a busy guy, but when I get home... It's us 24-7. Mm-hmm. We're hanging no, out. It's I'm not playing. 24-7. Uh, it's us for, for the little time that we are together. That's the problem. We're playing. And he has, he has my roommate, Andrew, that's there with him all day. Like, uh-huh. he, so he has like yeah, a little... Andrew's like the nanny that takes care of the child in the movie. He's gonna he loves call. him now. Yeah. He's going to think Andrew's his uh, uh, dad. Yeah, oh, he's not no. peeing on Andrew's bed, is he? Well, he's not allowed in that room. <laughs> he's not allowed in Andrew's bed, oddly well, enough. I'll just leave you with this. I think a fix to this problem would be as you're busy and you're going to get busier and mm-hmm. busier is, since you don't want to take your dog to doggy camp, which is very expensive, Yes. Uh, get a little cat. A, not another I'll dog. get a cat. But get a cat as a little friend so he's not so lonely. I was thinking we just did like a little little babysitting thing here. Yeah. <laughs> we all you would just him take him work. for an hour. Yeah, keep bringing you know? him. Right. That was a fun day. Yeah, but it was a lot I more pressure for me. I don't know if it feels me. so special if you do it all the time. It won't. But... And it's a, lot of, it's a lot of pressure for me. It's not that he's like annoying or an issue when he was uh-huh. at work. He was perfectly fine. And I could totally have him here every day, but it just makes me nervous. Yeah. Because yeah. yet again, whenever I've trusted him even a little bit, he's always let me down. Mm-hmm. That's and his big thing. We can barely trust you to behave here. <laughs> exactly. So forget about Jim. Forget, forget Jim about Jim here. No, equation. I love it because then you'll be like, hey, he doesn't pee in the bed anymore. He just pees at work. He yeah. just pees here at the <laughs> office instead. So every time smoking I smoking cigarettes <laughs> and <laughs> start <laughs> eating peanuts constantly. Well, mm-hmm. enjoy the podcast today. Uh, like we mentioned, if you have anything you want us to include uh, for our either our Would You Rather Wednesday or any future questions. If you text 877 to Radio U, put that as for the podcast, we will get it. Long show, long intro today. Oh my gosh, yes. Yeah, we better we better pull the plug. We better keep it going. No, let's just yeah. keep talking until <laughs> 10 just, minutes. Uh, what do you think? All right, bye guys. <laughs> See you guys. It's the worst of the riot on Radio U. Okay, you guys think it'd be helpful sometimes, you know, dating changes so fast. Sure. Uh, all the the lingo and the terminology. What if there was like a dictionary that broke down all the new dating terms so that you wouldn't ever uh, have somebody say to you like, Hey, uh, I think it's time for us to define our situationship or something like that, (laughs) you know? And then you would know what they're talking about. Sure. I've got here a new uh, dating dictionary created by people who are, out there dating now between the age of 18 and 25 so that every generation and everybody can be on the same page of what all these different things mean. It's an actual dictionary or um, just, is it an app or what? I don't, I think. You oh, have, it's Tinder. They yeah, just released it. Yeah, it's a login to Tinder. Oh, I see. And so then they can define some stuff for you. I guess if you see stuff come up in your Tinder convos or something. Okay. Uh, Isaiah, you, I mean, we're all young enough. We should understand this stuff, but no, Isaiah, you're the one that's actually dating. Yeah. I definitely want to know if you've actually heard these terms, oh, like <laughs> situationship. Okay. Obviously, yes. Yes, you've heard that? Clearly, yes. And what is a situationship? A situationship is when you're not actually dating, uh-huh. but you're not not dating either. It's that weird in-between oh, where nobody really between. knows what's going on. Oh. That's a situationship. That needs a, a, a name. A situation in your relationship. Yes. Yeah, so I'm glad that you've got, that they've figured that one out. Uh, okay. What about... Um, 
Riz. You know what Riz is? Oh, I know Riz. Yeah? <laughs> You're looking you, got, at you got a lot of Riz? <laughs> I got so much Riz, it's crazy. <laughs> well, now it, it makes me worried about the word. <laughs> Riz, Riz means, that just means you're sm- the smooth. Oh. The smoothness. Yeah. It's short for charisma. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, Isaiah, you you got some Riz in you. A little Riz. Uh, do you know what kitten fishing is? <laughs> oh, gosh. Have you heard that? Kitten fishing is like cat fishing, but like a less aggressive version it's like instead of trying to be somebody else, you're like just kind of making yourself a little bit cuter. Oh. Which I still think, I would still consider that as catfishing, depending on how much cuter you it's are. Like, it's kind of like catfishing that you can get away with. Yeah, it's exactly. Like a, it's not a complete lie, but yeah. it's just like stretching if, it a bit. If you showed up on the date, you would be like, okay, it's definitely you, but you look like a little bit different, but we can probably still stay on the date. Yeah. Type deal. So you ever been kitten fished? Oh, I've been kitten fished. <laughs> I've been kitten fishing. <laughs> I think. That everybody has been kitten fished ever since. Dating I think everybody is thing. a kitten fish. Now wait, when you ask him if he's kitten fish? Yeah. I am a kitten fish. I think. <laughs> I think everybody that if you have a dating profile, your pictures look a little bit better than you actually do in real life. Most most likely. But is that? That's where it comes down to a question, isn't it? Yeah. Of whether that's just you at your best. Or whether it's not really you at all. It's not really me at all. Because <laughs> <laughs> okay. normally when you're going on a date, that's you at your best as well. Yeah. So it should be pretty close. Which brings me to my next dating dictionary term, date view. Have you ever heard that? I've never heard of date Nate, view. You've never heard of date view, Wait, Nikki? let me guess. What let me is guess. That? I'm ready for a guess. Okay. I think it's going to be when you're at the date, what they actually look like then. Hmm? Like what they actually look like in person. Oh, uh, no. sure. Nope, nope. Darn not it. Darn right. it. Date view is a portmanteau. Do you know what that means? I don't know what that means. <laughs> you just made a, a, you made it worse. You made a no. new one. <laughs> portmanteau is not in the dating dictionary, but that means two words that join together to make Got one it. word. And date view is when the date is like an interview. It oh, feels like an interview. Too many the questions. worst kind of date. The, the date worst view. kind of date. So now you know what to scream at them as you leave them when you say, I wasn't here for a date view. Yes, yeah, exactly. I'm walking out of this date view. <laughs> or if you just ghost them after you go to the bathroom. Yeah, so this is uh, this is all stuff that Tinder uh, went ahead and got young people, the youngest daters on the app, to go ahead and explain so that I guess that older people can start using these terms as well uh, to make it easier to date out of your age bracket. Yeah. If you want to start, uh, I don't know, looking for an older lady or something. You miss cushioning. Cushioning? What's cushioning? Cushioning is where you you have several backup relationships. Oh, yeah. (laughs) To soften the blow if your main relationship doesn't last. I mean, I've heard of that. I didn't know that was what it was called. That's a term, cushioning. uh, Yeah, so there you have it. Now you'll never be out of the loop when people are in a dating conversation until like a month from now when the terms change. There's new terms and you don't know those yet. But now you're in the loop, at least for now. You won't hear a show like this anywhere else. And that's probably for the best. The worst of the riot. Radio U. Because it is time for Would You Rather Wednesday. Oh, Isaiah, you, were you on the floor sleeping there for a moment? Yeah, what were I was you stretching. Doing? You were stretching. stretching. Okay. A back hurt. Okay. Mm. Unfortunately. So would you wrap? No, just you. Want to, <laughs> would you? You want me to crack it? I do. I do. I asked you for a massage earlier. You said no. Why don't no. you step on his back Massa- so you can get it to crack? You want me to step on it? Mm, I don't know if I want you to step on no, it. No, I was gonna do that thing where I. Uh, lock Can't like my, pick me up. Lock my hands and pick you up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's how I usually do it. Yeah, that's safe, right? Yeah, that's a good way to do it. Good. All right, I can, can have sh- him sign something or you sign yeah. something. So yeah, that sounds you, like a good idea. In case you hurt him. Yeah, in case <laughs> maybe he would hurt me if I fall over. Okay, would you rather Wednesday? The question is from John. Yeah, he texted in a bunch of would you rather's, uh, and so we're choosing one. But you can always text a would you rather suggestion in at eight seven seven two radio u. We also want you to answer this question of. Would you rather only eat meals that you cooked for Mm -hmm. the rest of your life or only eat meals from drive throughs for the rest of your life? That's a good question, John. It is a good question. That's why we chose it. That that needs some thought, I feel like. I don't think you can answer too quickly. I know what my initial initial reaction is definitely. (laughs) The initial reaction is it's it's drive throughs right? Sure. But do we have to pay for it? 
That's oh, my yeah. question. Uh-huh. Oh, that's good. Mm, if you had to pay for it, I don't know. They're taking oh. into account. Let's paying take money. For it. No, let's put money to the side. You think? Let's just say. Based oh, if it's money to the side, that's to the side, definitely drive through. But yeah. health is still a factor. Like health is still there. So you could either choose always eating at home or someplace through a drive-through. I don't think what I'm eating at home is all that <laughs> much more healthy than any drive-through. Okay. So uh, yeah, if we're putting money to the side, it's a clear drive-through choice. Yeah, uh, that's. I mean, it's not even a question. Don't right? you think though that after like say two months, all right, of drive-through stuff, you're talking yeah. breakfast, lunch, dinner uh-huh. of drive-throughs, you wouldn't ever think, boy, I just wish I could make something at home. No, 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 not at all. Not even a question. Not even, no. not even a little bit. <laughs> no. Not even ever. No, I, I could go to so it. many different places. I know there's so many. I could go to Chipotle. I could convince myself that's super healthy, uh-huh. and I could go to all kinds of places. It'd I just awesome. worry about like breakfast. All right, so it's got to be. A through drive through you're gonna get tired after a while. Nikki, you don't even really eat breakfast. What I do you know, mean? I know. And <laughs> Just you could, thought it was a good example. It was Plus, a good example. It was. <laughs> is it creative to say like there's even fat uh like Sheets. Sheets has drive throughs now. Sure. So you could go to Sheets and they probably would even hand you like if you just wanted a a, a parfait. They'd probably give you that, you know, like so. You Smoothie could, King, right? Mm. There's so many different things you could do. I think you could really, uh, you you wouldn't run out of options too quickly. You'd have a nice rotation. So if we're talking, if money's out of the equation, it's drive through. Drive through for you. Well, John's question is for our Would You Rather Wednesday: Only eat meals you cooked, or only food that came from a place that had a drive through. So if you text us, we'll come back and. We'll give your guys' uh, votes for that and and wrap up what we think would be the correct way to live. Yeah, we'll see if Nikki is really <laughs> honestly going to say meals at home. <laughs> I just know me. I'm going to just go to the same place over and over again, and eventually I'll be sad mm. about it. I think if money's not to the side, I'd pick at home, though. <laughs> I wouldn't pick. I'll have to think about that. If you have to spend money, I don't think I'd pick drive throughs Okay, you Eight, go with that. 8772 Radio U. Rest of your life. drive throughs or meals at home. Find more Riot content online. Riot.radiou.com And the question today coming to us from John is, for the rest of your life, would you rather only eat meals you cooked at home or only eat meals from fast food drive throughs Now, JW texted and said, hey, what about curbside? Does no. that count? Because that could be a game Change- changer. Yeah, it could be a game changer, which is why it doesn't count. It doesn't count? I told him it counts. Mm. <laughs> I'm trying to be supportive. Yeah. Because well, totally, then that's, you opens up a whole new game. That's just basically every restaurant. There. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. And obviously, since you already said money doesn't matter. If you're talking, you can eat from any restaurant in the whole world for the rest of your life or cook every meal at home. Then you're going You're obviously with that. choosing every restaurant in the entire world. Well, Regina says, I'd have to go with cooking at home. I wouldn't have to, I wouldn't have the patience to sit in a drive through three times a day and then eventually mm. feel awful health wise. I don't um, have the patience to cook every meal at home. Yeah, but I mean, in some places, about the same as the drive through. Yeah. Uh, Nicole says, I don't do breakfast and lunch, but I've been working for months late and usually stop and grab something on the way home. It's convenient. Drive through does get old, though. Mm. And if this is the rest of your I'd life. I'd like to see when that would happen. I, I really, <laughs> We've I'm never... waiting for that moment <laughs> in my life. Aaron, I know, me too. <laughs> Aaron says, if money's not a barrier at home, Hiring a chef, though. Mm, Does that that's count? That's still changing the game. Can you imagine how amazing that would be? A, a chef? Yeah, it'd be yeah, incredible. Obviously, that'd be better than any other option. So we would choose at home, then? Yes, I'd for but sure choose at home. It was meals you cook at home. I'm sorry. John didn't ask that. He just said he eating did. meals at home. He did. That is the letter of the <laughs> question. Because that's the whole thing about fast food is you don't have to make it. Right. That's why it's good. That's the benefit of it. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Dan says he's going to choose uh, food at home. Molly says meals at home, hands down. I'm always getting tired of drive through food, even after a short road trip. I have uh, one more layer to the game that definitely makes drive through food the guaranteed choice. How would you ever go on vacation? What do you? Oh, well, you'd have if to you, pre-make you everything. Go to, you you to pre-make go, or you go to Kroger when you get there. Mm-hmm. You want to try to cook it up and then spend your vacation cooking. Yeah, you'd, yeah. You'd get one of those rooms that has like the kitchenette thing the in suite. it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's not how I want to spend my time though on vacation. Hey, I it, guess maybe no, because can... I'm always cooking. It wouldn't even be like a, a nice change. <laughs> so listen, it's and a... I can only cook things I know how to make. 
and I don't know how to make that many things. So you just can't have a prolonged amount of time trying to come up with stuff on your own. Yeah. So I, I'm I'm definitely fast food. Uh, but drive through. If I have to, I think if you if you're doing fast food though, you don't have enough money to go on vacation because you're <laughs> spending right. a That's ridiculous right. amount of money. That's I why mean... I think I'd have to pick from home because it just saves so much money. Isaiah, every day eating out would be a vacation. It would be a great yeah. vacation. You're right. If I ate out all the time, I wouldn't have to go on vacay because it would be so awesome. But I think I, I, think I had to pick it from home. I'm picking it at home, too. I think eventually, we've never experienced it yet, but you would get tired of it. I just think I'd just keep finding new places. But the wild thing is I make, this is what's crazy, is I make the exact same things for dinner, for breakfast, lunch, and dinner <laughs> every day. Uh, and do. I've eaten you it for two years. I can tell you exactly what I'm going to eat this entire week. It'll be the same thing every single day. But... I don't really get tired of food, so if there was no money involved, I'd for sure pick fast food. Mm -hmm. But if I had to pay money, I would be forced to pick Kroger. Yeah, <laughs> I agree with Isaiah, 100%. Aaron says, what about when the weather gets bad? You'd have to go out in 10 inches of snow like to go to the drive through mm, So these but are all things you have to think about. What about when you forget to go to the grocery store, you don't have time to cook or something? You're You've always got stuff. something. Yeah, but it's not going to be something you're real happy with. Yeah, well, you know, that's What's how it worse? goes. Oh, no, I have to go to McDonald's again, or <laughs> I have to eat a microwave dinner or something. Like, something you make. Yeah, I think uh, that you, if you have to eat a hungry man or something, or worse, that uh, that could be, that's going to be disappointing. Well, Tim, final text. Cooking because not that many places have a healthy drive through option. That's okay, the truth. Tim, mm. humble brag. <laughs> I yeah. like your style, We Tim. get it, Tim. You're in shape. Hey, uh, Tim, we can eat bad at home, too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we got no problem with that. This is The Riot. Radio U. Tell me if this sounds familiar. Isaiah is having issues with his dog, Jim. Now, you brought Jim in last week to work uh -huh. because Jim, he turned two and it was his birthday, so he got to come into work day. It's a special yes. treat. And, and you was... always make Jim to seem terrible. Uh -huh. He is terrible. But he was pretty good. He was a peach. He was. He, he was, was good. Cute. He couldn't he was have been good. nicer. But so... you guys got to realize he wasn't around you very long. <laughs> like, you guys saw him for like a good 20 second period and I just locked him up in there with me. Uh -huh. If he's just with me, He's pretty good. Yeah. If I just like keep a close eye on him and yeah. there's nothing there for him to grab. Well, that's the problem. You're always out and about. Exactly. Leaving him unattended. And so when I'm, when I'm not there, he's in the crate. But there's sometimes when I'm home and I'm in the living room and I don't keep my eyes on 24-7 uh -huh. because he is two years old and should be able to operate on his own. <laughs> should be fine by now. You would think. <laughs> and recently he has regressed in a way that is almost unbelievable. That he is doing things now that he was doing at like eight months old. Aww. And I don't know what's going on hey, with him. Uh, eight months is still actually old to be doing exactly. what his problem is. <laughs> and the issue is he will not stop peeing in my bed. Oh. And there is nothing worse than getting ready for bed, walking into your bedroom, getting ready to lay down, uh -huh. and seeing that there's pee in there. So then you have no comforter, yeah. you have no sheets, you have to throw all, all of that in the washer, and you sleep in bed like I did last night. With a throw blanket and a pair of sweatpants mm. and a hoodie on. And then what do you freezing do this out. morning? And then this morning I wake up <laughs> and I get in the shower. And by the time that I had taken the shower and gotten out, he had peed in the bed again on the only throw blanket that was on the bed. And the worst part is, is if I, like, I can't punish him in a way that's like him not sleeping in the bed. And so the worst part is when he gets into the bed... When there's no blankets on there, yeah. and it's just a throw blanket, then he gets all, like, grumpy. Oh. Like, why is the bed so uncomfy? <laughs> Jim, why do you think the bed's so uncomfy? Because we don't have a comforter. Because you peed on it. And he's I... trying to get underneath this throw blanket that barely even squeezes over my body. Aww. Like, my feet are hanging out. He's trying to get underneath it. And I'm all like, right. dude, this is a no-go. Well, you got to move away from me. First, move away. First thing, before we get into solving the gym problem, you need to have another comforter. I mean, clearly. You, you need, need a second a, set of yeah, sheets. Yeah, you I have do. To. I, know I think you need three sets at this yeah. point. Probably. You, you need, need the one that's always in the wash. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> you, I'm, couldn't your mom, like, I know they're expensive. Could, you think your mom probably has a backup set? I'm sure there is in the house, yeah. Oh, no, your Easter basket. Yeah, I could just get it. I could <laughs> ask for a comforter <laughs> because my dog <laughs> is somehow peeing in the bed continuously. Yeah. Continuously. Nothing says, like, I'm fine living on my own with my dog. Like, asking for extra sheets. I've only had one dog in my 
my life. This has never been an issue. She's literally peed in the bed one time when we got a new mattress. I feel like that was a sign of marking her territory or something. But, Nikki, you've had a lot of dogs. You ever dealt with this issue? No, not no. peeing in the bed. So it's no. never specific to no. either Isaiah or Jim. Well, I looked up because I thought, well, maybe let's see what other dog people say about it. Yeah. Um, And they say that, like, to check, is he peeing all that you think he has in his little bladder, or is he just marking, like, a little tinkle here or there? Mm, it's a pretty decent amount. Okay, so then mm. he has to go to the bathroom. Like, he has to pee, but they also but say— he doesn't, though. I'm telling you, he does have to go. He's not marking the bed like some dogs do, but mm. I think this is Jim in a comment right here. Peeing on the bed can also be a common behavior with adolescent dogs who love to test the rules. That is him. So oh, that sounds it. like Jim. Like, it's totally it. Everything and, you've described about him. So he's not yeah, marking like the bed. He's, he's not, not marking. He's not doing anything like that now. And he's also like, this is the other thing, at nighttime, between like a three hour period before bed, mm. he probably goes outside like eight times. Mm. And I don't know why he's always standing by the door crying as if he has to go outside and go pee. And then he goes out there and I'm not really sure what he does. So, But he's out there plenty. What I'm hearing is, despite the fact that you spank your dog... <laughs> He still feels like you're a pushover, and, and he can walk all he over you he and do whatever he wants. <laughs> and so he's, he just keeps going up, pushing the envelope, seeing what he can get away with. Well, you want to know? And how you're to letting fix him get it? away with it. You want to know? Yeah. You gotta get a new bed. I was thinking a new dog. Yeah. <laughs> they say that the smell will always be, be there, so he knows he can always that that's the thing. And so mm. you you just need a new bed. Just a new bed. That's so a just crazy. A, what? That's can, a wild thing to yeah, say. Yeah. Can well, you just like, get a new th- two thousand dollar bed? Do, just, do you want it fixed or not? Yeah, I'd be. Uh, and then what happens is when I when Jim pees on the bed because yeah. I'm not joking. He averages. I'm washing my sheets like two or three times a week. He averages like two or three times a week. He's peeing on the bed yeah. before I go to sleep. So that's obviously incredible. But if he's not, if you're not washing it with the enzyme stuff, like it still smells like pee to him. Even I usually if you're bleach it. it. That's oh. what I do. I spray bleach directly on the bed. I don't know if that gets rid of it or not, but that has been what I've been doing as of late. And then I wash my sheets. Clearly. Good luck. It's not enough. You need a new bed. I new dog. And next, like... you gotta move. What's going to happen is I'm going to get a new bed. <laughs> yeah. he's and he's going to be on it. He's going to be on it. He's going to be on it. And I'm going to throw away the old one. And I'm going to be out however many thousand dollars. I don't know. Like, isn't the alternative like the No thing more bed? Nobody, no, but nobody wants to hear this. But it's just like how many nights and how many days can you put up with? Because I know like if you don't let him outside overnight, right? He doesn't necessarily have to go, but he'll sit there and whine. Yes. So how many nights in a row can you put up with him whining all through the night to finally kick these behaviors? You know what I mean? That's a good question. And isn't that, I mean, it's going to That might suck. be the way to go. Yeah. And I if you don't like... let him in bed, uh, he can't pee in bed, but then would he just pee somewhere, somewhere else? Yeah, then all of a sudden he's like peeing on the couch. Yeah, you have to. Oh, <laughs> you didn't even know he's that. done that before, too. <laughs> Oddly enough, he's done that before, too. <laughs> Good luck to you. I don't know. You got to lay down the law. I don't know why he's peeing. Why is my dog two not... years old and peeing everywhere? <laughs> I think I'm it's sad. Is it you or is it's it Clearly, him? I don't know. The Riot with Hudson and Nikki on Radio U. On Radio U. One of the top things that I see people talk about that seems to never leave people disappointed when you go to Disney World or Disneyland there's a lot of disappointment involved, I think. Well, I think that's once you get there and you realize what you paid and yeah. what the day's going to be like. As a grown-up, yep. yeah. Once you, once you're, it's on your bill for which, sure. Which is why you're also more disappointed because you're really truly just going there to eat. Uh-huh. And then you're spending a lot of money mm. on eating there and it's not all amazing. But at least, uh, at least... Supposedly, if you get a Dole Whip. Have you not had one before? I've never had one. They're good, but is it, like, amazing? I don't know. People act like it is. It's it's not. And there's a lot of dupes you can do at home. There is a lot of dupes. You can just make your own. Well, why do a dupe when you can have the real thing? I cannot afford to go to Disney no, that frequently. No, I mean, <laughs> what if you could bring a little taste of Disney into your own home? Oh, is Dole doing theirs? Dole is making the Dole Whip, the iconic Disney World, Disneyland Dole Whip. Available for you to purchase at home. Uh, It's coming to grocery store freezer aisles sometime this year. I don't know exactly when, but it will be coming your way. And uh, they've actually got a few different flavors that you're going to be able to pick up if you'd like. Probably in response to Mm -hmm. 
people just doing Dole Whip hacks at home and making yeah, they their wanna, recipes. They have that. So the Dole Whip um, has been at Disney since 1984. Hmm. And originally it was only available there unless you just made whatever version at home you thought was close enough to yeah. it. Yeah. But this would be like their their version of it. It's all about to change. You're all, all about to be able to bring the Dole Whip home. Now, that's what I was wondering was if it was a more recent thing because I'm well aware of it now. Mm-hmm. I know. And no, I've, it's older. But I haven't been to Disney World in a long time, and so I didn't know if it was, like, more recent, and that's why I've never had one. No, I think it just became extra popular with, like, Instagram and tagging it, and everybody wants, yeah. like, the churro at Disney and... There's some classic stuff that everybody always goes for, so that kind of renewed people's interest in it. Yeah, I guess I guess that's what it is. It's just now that yeah, now that Instagram or whatever is the thing. I'm trying to figure out. I know they've got different flavors. I'm just trying to oh, find. Oh, the Dole Whip. Yeah, I mean pineapple is like the classic yeah. one, right? But I know I saw a different story that said that they were doing different flavors, and I'm just trying. Were to you find. lying? No, they have different flavors. I Are just you don't sure? I, I swear. <laughs> I swear that there's different flavors of I don't know if I Dole believe Whips. you. Uh, here we go. Mango and strawberry mm-hmm. also will be an option in addition to the classic pineapple. That's what most people go with. I so can do what, a mango. What is, yeah, because pineapple, I don't like pineapple. Yeah, you'd like maybe the mango, mango then or strawberry. Mango, strawberry. What is a Dole Whip even? Is it literally just like it's some like, kind of fruit and soft serve? It's like soft serve, Mixed yes. together? Yeah. You think so? You think I would like it? Uh, I mean, I don't know. Sometimes you surprise me on what you like and don't yeah. like. <laughs> I don't want to be the one leading the charge that you're going to enjoy this. I think uh, I think I got to at least give it a chance. And it was always good at Disney because it was just nice and to cool you down. Yeah, but it says that you could get it near the Tiki Room, so you go in there, you could do the Tiki Room while you're eating a Dole Whip. But like, if you're at home or if you're in the freezer section, you're like, there's also ice cream. Yeah, <laughs> like, I feel like that's I'd go right. That's, that ice feels cream. more exciting <laughs> and. It's just when it's at home, it doesn't have the magic of Disney with it. Yeah. Either, so. You know, all the times you're there yelling with your parents, uh-huh. <laughs> getting Ki- lost. Children from are kicking Scrooge McDuck in yep. the shins and whatever. You're being threatened that you're going to have to go home. Yeah. Without the <laughs> atmosphere, I don't know if it'll be the same. Well, okay, Unless well, you want to recreate all that at home, too. You could. What you do is you get Dole Whip, you get the stuff, uh-huh. and then you go back to your parents' house and have them yell at you for yep. a few. Turn the heat up all the way. Turn the heat up on the way. Uh-huh. And it'll be just like. And- and Disney. get your little cousin to kick somebody dressed in a Scrooge McDuck outfit. Uh, well, we have the whole day planned. That's uh, <laughs> it's just like Disney. The Riot Radio. You think about how this would change things. What if there was a shot you could get that would sober you up? Like a shot, After, shot, or a like an arm shot, or like, like a, a drink shot, like, or like a well, either an arm one. shot, as in like a like basketball shot. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of shot are we talking? What, what uh, shot are we doing? A deep shot. Does it change your? Does it? Would it change your opinion if it was one or the other? Like a shot you well, drink yeah, versus yeah. a shot. Yeah, I don't arm. want a needle shot. I don't like shots either. Yeah. So I want it to be a drink. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want right. a shot. I'll let the scientists and. Uh, I guess drug manufacturers is, or whatever, alcohol companies work on that. Which I guess goes back to our childhood because weren't we always like, can I just have liquid instead yeah. of a shot, please? Can I please <laughs> just have it in like some sort of liquid form? Can I have the pink stuff? When was the last time you got a, a shot, uh, like a needle, Nikki? Uh, last Friday, last I got Friday? two of them. It's one not that e- bad, is one it? One on each arm. Not so bad, huh? It's not the best. It's not the best. I mean, that's an arm needle, though. That's different from like a Oh, syringe. no, wait. I got an uh, an IV done. So, yeah. Yeah. That was IVs worse. are way different. Oh, Okay. Way different than just if somebody <laughs> gives you a, some kind of shot in the arm. But Isaiah, you probably haven't had a shot in a long time. Ever. Long time. That's because yeah. you're not going to the doctor ever. Uh, <laughs> uh, okay. I have here a uh, promising development in regards to a shot that could sober you up. Scientists have been testing it on mice where they had two, they had mice and they uh, got them all drunk. And then they. Oh, really? Stop. Oh, don't say it like that. It was the time oh, of their life. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> they're not party mice. They, they don't party know. Mice. They were that day. They, they got, were that day. They got the mice. Uh, they gave them a binge dose oh, no. of alcohol. Wow. And then for some of the mice, they gave them a hormone, a hormone that humans actually produce. Uh, I'm not going to go into it. Well, no, sure. It's fibroblast growth factor 21, if you want to mix it up at home. And... Uh, they gave in the mice that 
were given that hormone, like an extra dose of that hormone, mm-hmm. sobered up in half the time of the mice that did not receive it. So they're saying this is a promising development, uh, possibly something that could help cure. I don't know if it would like do more hangovers or just get you to the to the point where you're sober even after drinking alcohol. Yeah, because say you uh, were at a dangerous amount, mm-hmm. could that help you like be given out of hospital yeah. or something? Or we trust in someone at the the place. At the, party. At the bar. Oh my gosh! Can you imagine if they're like, "Here, I have the growth hormone." Uh, brother, you're getting a little bit yeah. too saucy. Let me help you out here. I, th- I think it would change. The- See, that's why I was picturing at first, actually, a shot that like a bartender could give you, as yeah. in a shot you would drink. And it's like, okay, I'm headed home for the night, mm-hmm. and you buy that one, and that's your end of night drink, and then you're safe to drive home or whatever. Sure. Uh, I think that would change the the world, and I don't know if it would necessarily be positive, a, this except is an that it might stop. Shot. Yeah, it's actually a shot. I don't know if I trust the bartender. Sorry, bartender. I mean, you know what? They do some pretty impressive stuff, lighting drinks on fire, and you know all the flipping around. Some bartenders. Can do. you imagine how long the line would be? I mean, if you're trying to get a drink normally, the bartenders don't want to yeah. give it to you. But if you want to get up there and they're trying to give you a shot, and you didn't tip them enough, it's, yeah, it's gonna be like waiting to the BMV. You're not getting up there for an yeah, hour or two. That's right. <laughs> Sorry, I've got all these other people to. Yeah, they're I gotta not give them a shot eye first. Contact with you, mm-hmm. but I don't know. It's uh, like it seems like a a good and a bad thing. But overall, I mean, probably better to have it than to not, right? To have it as an option. I think it's like a hospital thing if it's like a, a severe situation. Yeah. But what if? What if they could just sell Jack Daniels the sober one? The, the sober version? The sober <laughs> shot of Jack Daniels. Can it taste good? Can we make it taste good? Yeah. I, I still worry that if if you have to get a shot every time you go out, uh-huh. you might be going out the wrong way. <laughs> you might be going a little bit too, and, hard. too yeah. hard. But Because the bigger thing is they say that no one nowadays realizes that uh, – a lot of people will have liver issues mm-hmm. in a few years. You just don't realize that you're drinking at that level. Yeah. And so they were hoping that this hormone can help also your liver perhaps mm. uh, get better. But, I mean, if you damage yeah. your liver for the most part from alcohol, it's not. It just stays that you way. You cannot return to a better place. See? I can just imagine how this could be used in a bad way. Where yeah. they're like, well, you know what? I'm going to drink a ton and then just give me that little shot give thingy. Shot. And then let me drink some more. And you give me that little shot thingy. You drive or anymore. Yeah, oh, it's a disaster. Yeah, you could just go way too hard all the time. So, yeah, that's. I feel like it would encourage people to drink more. And, uh, like, some of the effects, those effects are still, even the being drunk effect at the end of the night may be alleviated. And where are you getting the hormone from? Like, Amazon? Or where you go to the doctor? Oh, or? CVS. I CVS? Just, <laughs> yeah. Hold on, let me drive over to CVS. Hang on, I'll get I'll this sober shot. Sober up over you there. Kroger. I, yeah, I just, it, to me, my mind initially went to, if they sold this at the bar, yeah, what that would be like? Oh, because then they would use it in a bad way to keep you drinking. They yeah, they would. would. Want to, yeah, they would want to have this yeah. on hand. That's dangerous. Yeah, it could be dangerous. So uh, it, it, the hand strikes and gives the flower. That's what I always say. All right, what a unique way to end that, Hudson. Thank <laughs> there you. you. Go. Thanks for watching the worst of the riot. Since you made it this far, you might as well like, subscribe, and check out riot.radiou.com for even more More riot. riot.